I get a little video of this? Come on, you Is that okay? Yeah, you look as if you know what you do. <laughs> That was pretty good. Um, yeah, welcome to the Sound of Gold Knitting podcast. Um, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Um, yeah, this is episode five. My name's Nicole. I am a 23 year old knitter in Dundee. And yeah, this is a podcast where I talk about knitting, knitting related things, um, like escapades, and me a little bit. I talk a little bit about me. Um, let's, let's get right into it. I've been away. I think I've, it's, I think it's been like a month since I recorded the last video or at least posted the last video. So I have been, September has been a really, really busy month for me. <laughs> I've been, uh, at the Scottish Yarn Festival, first of all, which was super exciting. I was hoping to get that video out before I started back at uni. Um, and I did not manage that. I knew that if I didn't get it out before I started uni, it was going to be like, I'm not going to get it out for a while. Um, because I'm in my fourth year now, my final year of my bachelor's degree. So I'm writing my dissertation. And yeah, it's been a bit hectic organizing meetings with supervisor, um, starting all of my other modules and, and all that kind of thing as well. Um, and also doing a couple night shifts here and there. So it's been a little bit hectic. But I'm here. Um, I have, there's been so, so much stuff has happened, but this episode is going to be a Scottish Yarn Festival episode. Finally, my Scottish Yarn Festival episode. Um, before that, though, I'm going to talk about what's in my cup. It's a classic. We know it. We know it and we love it. In my cup here today, I have a coffee. I think this is a French press that Connor made um, lovingly for me this morning. Um, and it's, I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure what the beans are as well, but it's like, it's fresh, freshly ground. Connor just made it. And, um, yes. Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome back. Welcome back to, to, welcome back to this being a brown, this being a brown coffee pod, coffee podcast and an knitting podcast. Today we're drinking L. Carazal. Again by Square Square Mile <laughs> Roasters. <laughs> because I have a coffee subscription to them oh, um, wow. at the moment. Ooh, should you should tag them. Yeah, we should. We send me please send me free coffee, James Hoffman. Um and fittingly James Hoffman owns this roasters. They're based down in London, in the square mile of London. Um <clears throat> And uh, we're using the square his... mile of London. Yeah, it's like square a square mile roasters. Yeah, That's cool. It's like a whole it's an area. That's cool. Um and um we're using James Hoffman's, uh, well, based on his French press recipe. Come on, um, a little bit more. Based on his French press recipe. Um, so this is uh, 1 to 15 ratio, 1 gram of coffee to 15 grams of water. And then, um, yeah, 4 and a half minutes, clean, pour. Nicole likes 4 and a half minutes. Coffee, very juicy. Delicious. It's very juicy, very stone fruity. The notes in the bag, I don't know if you get any of these, Nicole. Hmm? Plum, hazelnut and apple. Definitely get plum. But I made this, Nicole had a, a late start yesterday and the bag had just arrived, so I made her a wee little Aeropress yesterday and you thought it was delicious. I thought so. it was so yummy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Goodbye. See ya. <laughs> Thanks for, see you. What? See you again next week. See you again next week. Oh yeah. wow, weekly. Mm. Um, wow, okay. Goodbye. Bye. There we go, that's what's in my cup. Um, you might have also noticed, I'm kind of like looking off to the side a little bit. Um, and I could tell where Connor was in frame because I got a camera. I'm so excited. I finally got a camera and it has a viewfinder, I think is what it's called. So I can see myself, I can see that it's recording and yeah, I think this is going to make things so, so, so much easier. Um, I also had a good time just taking random pictures. And I did take this camera to the Scottish Yarn Festival with me. So I have lots of footage. Most of it 
unusable <laughs> because I had, I literally got the camera, opened it. I took like a few pictures and maybe a video in my house and then immediately was like, went to the festival. Um, so I have lots of stuff. I'm going to be like every now and then intermittently, I'm just going to have like some footage up maybe. Maybe I'll do it over the whole screen. I'm not totally sure yet. Um, one huge, <laughs> one like barrier to me sitting down to actually record this was not being sure whether I want to do like a voiceover with the footage that I had or um, just like insert clips or not use the clips at all. I don't know. So I figured I just need to sit down, just do it. And then whatever kind of happens creatively, whatever uh, inspiration comes to me, I will do that. So very briefly, I'm actually going to talk about what I am knitting. It's a bit out of order. I'm going to talk about what I'm knitting because it's literally the same stuff I've been knitting for the last like month. I am still working on these. So the first thing I have is my Ingrid sweater. I kind of recently, in the grand knitting scheme of things, just joined for, joined the body. Here, you can see it here. Just joined the body. And then I finished one of the balls that I was using. Um, so I decided for like a little bit of something new, I was gonna move on to the arm. So I've knit one arm. Um, it looks a little bit like strange, but once I block it, this is gonna be the perfect length. I probably should have blocked it. I could have blocked it now actually. Um, but yeah, this is knit using Willy Knit um, Worth Mill DK yarn in the color Lupin. I'm knitting this on size four. No, not size four. US size six, so four millimeter needles. Um, and then for the second rib section of the sleeve, so you've got like one two by two rib here, and then you have another single rib section. Um, I changed to a, I actually, oh gosh, what did I do? I think what I, oh dear, what's wrong with me? I think actually what I did was in this first like two by two rib section, I changed and went down to a 3.5 millimeter needle. And then I went down even further to a 3.25 millimeter needle for this bottom rib section. So we'll see how that looks. I think it's gonna come out well. Um, I think one kind of interesting thing that I also did was in this, in the mock cable section, I totally forgot that I did, <laughs> I did this. In the mock cable section, I think it looks pretty good. You'll see in the underarm that I actually decided to, um, like I decided that because there was gonna be eight stitches decreased in that underarm for at least for my size um instead of having the mock cable section go across those eight stitches and kind of like be kind of lost and trying to figure out what to do as I decrease the stitches in that section um of the arm I decided to kind of create almost in my head like throwaway stitches so I decided to do the mock cable section up until you know you can kind of, I hope you can see what I'm talking about. Basically I do the mock cable section and then I have here, I had like eight stitches. So four stitches at the beginning of the round and four stitches at the end of the round that do not have uh, the mock cables. I instead did like a one by one rib, but I think I could have done like just stockinette or just maybe garter stitch or whatever. Kind of having throwaway stitches that as they were decreasing, the mock cable section was coming together. Um, and so you don't have like weird kind of crossovers of the mock cable section and you don't have like, does that make sense? <laughs> I hope it makes sense. Um, but that's what I did. I think it looks pretty good. I, I do like the way that this looks. Um, I think if I was to do it again, I might actually have just done like garter stitch or something so that it's kind of like leaning into this idea that there's going to be stitches here that are decreased and I'm going to be losing stitches instead of trying to cover that up 
throughout the mock cable section. That just seemed a bit too complex for me. So yeah, that's what I did. Um, and I do like the way it looks. So I am going to be doing that on the other sleeve, I believe. I might, uh, I might go back and change it to garter stitch. Because I think that would look just a little bit nicer than the one by one rib kind of thing I started here. But to be honest, I like this a lot better than the way that uh, it turned out on Connor's and Um So that's what I did. I'm almost at the end of another ball. <clears throat> I'm almost at the end of another ball here on the body. So I think I might go in and do the other sleeve next and then come up and do the collar. But yeah, my first knit, that's what's going on there. I also have my muscle bra hat, take two. <laughs> so here it is. I'm already feeling much, much, much more confident with the way that this is turning out. It does not seem like it's gonna be a gigantic hat. And I gauge swatched. I'm knitting this on 2.5 millimeter needles. Last time I knit, last time I tried to knit it, I believe it was on 2.75 millimeter needles. Um, so you might be able to compare the difference, but I think this comes out looking a lot nicer, this fabric. I don't know if you agree. I think it looks much like, I think for this yarn, like I was using the same yarn, this is just um, drops. Oh dear, drops charisma, maybe. Um, in the colour 16 pistachio, if it's not charisma, I'll put it on screen and um, what it actually is. This is the same yarn that I tried to knit it in, tried to knit this muscle bra hat in before. It didn't turn out like I wanted it to. Um, so yeah, smaller needle, gauge swatch, and I wrote down what my gauge is. It's about somewhere, but it doesn't really matter. And made it to a slightly smaller stitch count than it needs to be. I think this is going to turn out really well. I'm really, I think this is perfect. So that's that. That's what I'm knitting. My two projects, <laughs> they're, they're still on the go. I'm really, really hoping to have my Ingrid Sweater finished before Christmas. Um, so I can have it as my little like Christmas sweater, go up to see the family, all that kind of thing, wear my Ingrid Sweater. And maybe I can convince Connor to wear his Ingrid Sweater for a little bit as well. So we can get some cute matching pictures and yeah, that'll be fun. My two projects. So with that, I'm quite happy to move on to the Scottish Yarn Festival. Um, I will just right out the bat say a huge thank you to Eva, who runs the Scottish Yarn Festival. I believe she created the Scottish Yarn Festival as well. Um, this year it was held in Perth. Um, I think it is always her held in Perth actually, at the Dewar Centre. Um, it was a two-day thing on the 9th and 10th of September. It was really, really awesome. It was so cool, like, going there. I did go both days. Um, and meeting up with some of my favourite podcasters, seeing all this absolutely beautiful, beautiful yarn in person was really, really cool. Making some purchases, definitely. Um, but yeah, Eva was just amazing. It was really brilliant. Um, I, on the first day that I went there, I was immediately greeted by Eva. Um, who actually messaged me beforehand to ask if I wanted to get a little podcaster lanyard. Actually, hang on. Yeah, my little podcaster lanyard. Um, just to kind of, mostly to have, feel like I have a reason to have my camera out, like recording things, get rid of a little bit of that awkwardness there. Um, and explain why I'm taking photos and pictures and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I was immediately greeted by Eva at the door. Um, I can't remember if she actually was, but in my head, she was just holding this huge bunch of her own brand new Provenance yarn, Provenance wool, um, which I did get a picture of because it looks incredible. It looks amazing. And she's, it's like, it's like she was holding her child. It was so, so like beautiful to see and so exciting to see somebody so excited about yarn. Um, so that was just, released this provenance yarn i will say check that out there are nine colors two blends um it's i can't remember exactly what the composition is but yeah 100 percent wool uh 100 scottish wool so that was really cool <laughs> awesome 
Um, the kind of like basis, if you're not kind of like uh, aware, the Scottish Yarn Festival was essentially something like, I have it here, 59, 59 different uh, stalls for all dedicated to Scottish yarn um, coming from all over the country. I think there was a few actual, actually English, there's a little English yarn, British yarn as well, I'll say 100%. Um, in all different compositions, I have lots and lots of footage, so I'll probably be inserting some videos and some pictures here so you can get a kind of magnitude scale, scale of magnitude um, for, for what it was like. You just walk in and there's 100% like the smell of like all this wool was like, I'm in heaven. This is like a dream. Um, so I kind of went in on the first day into the Dura Centre. There's kind of like two levels. Um, most, the, the large majority of the yarn was situated on the uh, first floor. And then you kind of go upstairs and that's where you have like, um, you know, podcaster, did like meetups, designer pop-ups, um, the Seely McWheelie like spinning, uh, little spinning, spinning demos, a walking demo that was up there as well. But the large majority of the stalls, not just yarn, I have to say, um, also like, you know, accessories. So at the Seely McWheelie stall, for example, there were also, and, and other stalls actually, but there was like Chowgu needles that you could buy in person. There was, you know, Licka, Likey, Licka, I think, uh, needles um, at some of the other stalls, but loads of like, you know, accessories. It was, it was a, I think it's actually, I think it has been previously called maybe the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase. Um, but yeah, loads of, it was like an emporium of, uh, of yarn and yarn related things. So I kind of went in the first day. I was immediately kind of like greeted by Eva. And then I very quickly met uh, Nancy Wheeler. <laughs> of um what is it of knit sit happy um that's at least on instagram i'm actually not sure if she has a youtube channel of the same name but if so i will link that down below as well but i immediately got to chatting with nancy who was as i was <laughs> kind of entranced by uh, a vintage sock uh, what you, like a vintage sock machine, a, sock, a vintage sock knitting machine, um, which I have, I think like a good, a good 40% of my video footage is actually just of this vintage knitting machine because I thought it was so cool. I thought it looked so nice. Um, this was at, I believe the Border, Border Mill stall. Um, they of course had lots and lots of beautiful four ply yarn. I didn't buy any, but um, they were making this sock out of some four ply yarn. I got to chatting with the, oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the person <laughs> at the border mill stall, um, telling me a little bit about, uh, making, I guess like sock blanks. Um, so just knitting like in the round either by hand, but I guess in this case it was on a knitting machine. Um, and essentially using like an afterthought heel, toe and sock, heel, toe and sock, yeah. And maybe afterthought cuff, I don't know if that's a thing. Um, but I've never, I've never done an afterthought heel and I got to thinking, I'm not gonna buy a knitting machine, but I kind of like the idea of just having a little, you know, sock, like blank maybe, if that's what it's called. Um, just like, just knitting that in the round, just keeping, keeping it going until I think, yeah, that's about sock length and putting in an afterthought heel. Um, I would like to try that because I haven't done that before. And I also think it could be a good way to make socks kind of two at a time as well. Like I could just knit this little tube continuous, continuously until it's long enough, not just for one sock, but for two socks. So food for thought and a really cool knitting machine. Footage of that is up here as well. Um, the next thing that I did <laughs> was um, I kind of like was walking around a little bit, kind of getting lay, lay the land, seeing what's there. Um, 
and I came across the Edelweiss Fibre Stall, which was really cool to see that in person. I was kind of just talking about it recently or a few months ago, um, and that's where I got the uh, Autumn Cliché like standard sock yarn that I made my mini mock neck tank in. So it was really cool to see all of that yarn in person, to kind of see all the colours that I've seen online and kind of being like, oh, so like, that's what it looks like, this is what it feels like. I mean, that, that I had seen like a lot of, a lot of the stalls there, I'd seen stuff from them online, but it was really, really cool to see, um, to see it all in person. Uh, I kind of like really feel it, touch it, all, all that good stuff. So that's what I did. I kind of just walked around um, and then I got to buy in. Let's talk about the things that I bought. I'm gonna start with yarn, it's the majority of what I bought. Um, and I'm, they're also, the yarn that I bought is also gonna be from the, like I'm also gonna talk a little bit about my interactions with the vendors. Um, pretty early on, I saw the bow fiddle yarns stall um this is one that i was really excited this was a, like a stall that i was really excited to see in person um because i have been kind of like spying on the online stuff and not really wanting to bite the bullet um but a few months ago a couple months ago i talked about wanting to get a yarn i talked about wanting to get a yarn for a shawl um, I still don't have a pattern for that in mind, but I've got some really great recommendations for from my comments. Um, but I also talked about wanting to have a uh, yellow and pink yarn for a long sleeve top. And I saw this yarn and I thought, actually, I want a yellow and pink shawl. <laughs> um, so this is... Oh my god, it looks so good. It looks so pretty. Am I I'm not crazy. This is incredible. This is so beautiful. Um yeah, this is Pear Drops from Bow Fiddle Yarns. Um it is this beautiful like pink and yellow kind of like peachy yarn that is just so beautiful. It's so vibrant. Um this is a four ply um a four ply hank yeah hank um it's 100 grams um so i'm actually not sure if it's going to be totally long enough for a shawl but i've thought about adding a white four ply and doing some kind of like um striped or some kind of sectioning with like a white yarn or something or like pink or just yellow or, or something like that, um, but I have ideas. This is going to be a shawl and it's gonna be so beautiful. Um, but yeah, this was, this was I think, my first purchase. Um, I'm just obsessed with it still. Um, I don't think I'm gonna make this into a top. Maybe I will. It's gonna be a shawl. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna make something out of it, that's for sure. So yeah, this is my first purchase, both of the yarns. I have uh, footage of that, uh, like, that stall as well, um, so that was really cool. That was my first purchase. My second purchase was actually from mm, Keith Ness Yarns. Um, I got to talking with Greg, who was running the Keith Ness Yarns stall, and I believe runs Keith Ness Yarns in general. Um, we were actually kind of just chatting about like the weather, so British. Uh, we were talking about, it was so, so hot. Um, I was sweating buckets. We were kind of talking about, we were just talking about yarn. And I believe um, Greg has his own flock of sheep. Mm, don't quote me on that, but at least access to, I believe he has his own flock of sheep, but. If I'm wrong, I'm gonna cut this out. It's going. <laughs> um, but I saw, I because I knew I didn't really want like there wasn't anything that I was like I have a project I want to make out of this. Um, but I did see like a little bucket or like a bin of like single balls in like random colors that was like you know buy one ball for you know however much buy two balls for 
you know, XYZ and buy three balls, like little kind of like, not odds and ends, but like kind of odds and ends. So I bought this little, <laughs> this little cake of pink yarn. Um, I believe it's 100% wool. Um, it doesn't feel like anything kind of like softer than that, but yeah. I think it's just a really cute color. And I was chatting to Greg and I thought he was really cool. So I bought <laughs> a little hank of yarn. I think it was something like, I think it was like five to seven pounds, somewhere around there. Um, and I think I might make this into a little Sophie scarf for myself. Um, I think this is like, I think, th I think this is maybe like 70 grams, like 75 grams, maybe somewhere between 50 and 100 grams. It's not, um, not much. Maybe 50 grams, actually. Um, so yeah, it's this really cute pink wool. Might be a little Sophie scarf for myself. Oh. But yeah, this was, I think, my second purchase. <laughs> really cute. Um, and then that takes me on to, this is not a purchase, but I was walking past the Toft stall, which had some really, really cool yarn. Every, they all had, like, every stall had really cool yarn. So I can't keep saying that. It was a common denominator. The yarn, really cool, really beautiful stuff. Um, there was nothing there that I saw and I was like, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, Toft. I got this free little crochet pattern. Like, it's a little crochet pattern in the back for this cute little flower person. Is this not adorable i think <laughs> i don't really know how to crochet <laughs> but um i talked about i took my friend the second day and she was saying she might show me how to do how to read this pattern and how to do all the things and maybe we could do a little like friends make along a little toft crochet mountain avens i think is what it's called it's called um a little make along. Maybe if any of you guys got one of these, we could do like a little make along with this. Um, but yeah, this is <laughs> this is also so cute. It was free, um, so I just I picked that up. Even though I don't know how to crochet, but I have plans to learn how to crochet. Um, so that was the third thing I picked up, and then the first day I also picked up some big BFL. This is from the Needle and Fred stall. Um, the lovely ladies at the stall helped me pick up the color. It's so beautiful. Is this not so beautiful? Um, so these are, I got three of these. Oh, so exciting. Um, these are a little bit bigger than the standard. So these are 150 grams each each um, hank in this beautiful color. This is the color Malvit Malvit. Um, this is a BFL four ply yarn. This I bought with the intention of making it into a Whitmer cardigan. There we go, there it is. Um, I cannot remember, 600, 600 meters. I need 1,300 meters, I think, to make my size in the Whitmore cardigan. So I think my plan for this is to um, get a, should I get more and hold it double? I think I'm gonna get a mohair and hold it, and, uh, hold it together with a mohair. I think that's gonna look really nice. Um, but this is gonna be my Whitmore cardigan. I think, I realized, or not realized, but like, I really liked this color. I was super drawn to this color. And then, you know, I got into the car, took a little break and pulled up my Ingrid sweater to knit. And it's like, <laughs> not the same, but like pretty similar. Maybe purple, just my color. Like, I mean, I think it would look really cute and they'd be sort of different purposes, so. We'll see what I do with this. I, my, my plan is this is gonna be a Whitmore cardigan. So yeah, ah, it's so cute. I love holding <laughs> these huge things of yarn. It's so much fun. Anyway, yes, that is purchase number however many. And that was day one. No, do you know what else I got on day one? 
from Soft Accents UK. Um, this is a business. This is a UK based business. I think based in I think based in England somewhere. I'm not totally sure. Um, but this is run by the most lovely lady called Jackie, who takes um, she's she's Zimbabwean, which is really cool. Or her her parents are Zimbabwean at least. Um, and she takes these beautiful African prints and these beautiful, vibrant, bright prints and turns them into little, little project bags. Um, this is the one that I got. I just love this purple color with the green and the yellow. Oh my God, that looks so good. A little tassel, a little tag here. Soft Accents UK, 100% check it out. I spent so much time talking to Jackie and uh, Sarah, um, who were running that stall. I was, I was, I was immediately drawn to that stall, just seeing all the vibrant colors and seeing the bright, like beautiful pops of color in this bag. And I was like, yes, I need what whatever they've got. And then I get closer and I figure, I see like some of the African print. Um, I'm like, yes, this is this is it. Um, so I got this um, little project bag. This is where my muscle bra hat stays. And yeah, it's so, I mean, I love it. It has a little like waterproof coating on the inside as well. It's like got quite a few, I think it's got quite a few nice layers. Um, but yeah, 100% like check these out. I did talk to uh, Jackie about whether she would do international shipping. Um, because I know a lot of you guys are not uh, in the UK and I thought like once I show these guys this how could you not how could you not isn't it so pretty anyway I didn't think myself a project bag girly but I've actually really been enjoying having my hat and that just being able to take the project bag with me and having the project bag on my lap instead of just having the yarn kind of everywhere and it's rolling around um, so I'm actually really enjoying that I don't know if I'd get a bigger one <laughs> to have my Ingrid sweater in. Um, I usually just use like the, uh, <laughs> you know, the bags that you get from Wool, Wear Wool Warehouse. I don't know if you're aware, but they're just kind of like, um, I don't know. Oh, here. just kind of like, I can't remember what this fabric is called, but whenever you make an order with Wool Warehouse, they usually like, ship it in one of these bags um i like to just use these but i've really been enjoying having a little project bag um and it's so cute and super soft uh, and i love it and that's where my muscle bra hat is so that was all my purchases from the first day um the second day <laughs> i went back i did a Another big loop of the place. It was the same stall. I was kind of like, oh, is there anything else that I've missed? Is there anything else that I like have plans definitely to make in the future that I need yarn for? Because now is the time to get it. Um, so I got, you can kind of see it in the background actually. Uh, a couple of these um, fun braids, uh, which are actually one, two, three, four, five five little kind of like skeins of We County Yarns Kinross 4 ply. Little 100 gram, 100 gram skeins um, in this beautiful like autumn autumnal um, like color scheme. So I got two of these and then I got a little bit more white and this like oatmeal color um this is snowdrop and this is i think it's called porridge um which i also got at the yarn festival these are both also the kinross four ply and these are gonna be <laughs> an autumn doodle cowl i was so 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 influenced by Natalie of Lally Bee Knits. If you have not seen their podcast, 100% check it out. Um, it's really cool. She's so she's really really lovely girl. I love watching her episodes. Um, and I was I was so like she she does the most brilliant color work. Like 
she just seems to do it so effortlessly. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm like, I have to try. So I saw Natalie's doodle cowl in one of her recent episodes. Um, and I'm going to make it. So this is, this is what I got to make the doodle cowl. I have to make one with ghosts in it. And I need one that has... Uh, a little fox motif in it. Um, I'm really excited about that. So I have my Whitmore cardigan stuff. I have my I have autumn doodle cowl stuff, and I have um, a shawl in the works, or at least in the plans. Plus, Sophie scarf. So those are my knitting plans, and those are the standout stalls to me. Um, aside from one more thing, all of the things I got, or most of the things I got, I bought with an intention to knit something from it, like out of it. Um, I try, I had to try very hard not to just kind of go crazy and buy all the things I wanted to buy. Um, that's all the yarn I bought, kind of. I got a little bit more yarn because I was at the Ammo yarn stall and my goodness, when I say like the kind of things that I want to make or the kind of yarn that I want to buy is vibrant. It's like full of like these rich colors and really vibrant, bright colors. Like to me, I actually saw in, I think Sarah Sammy of who was helping Jackie at the soft accent stall has in her Instagram bio something that's like purple is a neutral color. And to me, something like, like this purple, like this vibrant, this is my neutral. This is my like, I don't really think I would knit for myself something less colorful than that. I, of course, you know, there's a time and a place for something that's like white or beige or nude or, oh, a nice rich brown something, a nice rich chocolatey brown. Yes, love that. But in general, I want things that are bright and vibrant. Um, and oh my God, Ammo Yarn stall, uh, Ammo Yarns, it's like neon. It's all neon and color. Like you can spot it a mile away. Beautiful. I love it. So I had to get, oh, is that the wrong side? I guess. I had to get an advent calendar. <laughs> it's so, oh, I'm so excited about this. I've never had a yarny advent calendar. And I realized for the last few years at Christmas, I haven't had like an advent calendar at all. So I got myself my first yarny advent calendar. I don't know what I'm gonna make out of it. I think what I'm gonna do is at the end of it, if there's like a kind of gradient that I see, and that I like, I might make a little top out of it. Um, or I might try to anyway, or maybe make some scarves or some hats. Oh, another muscle bar hat could be really good. But once I put the footage in, you'll know exactly what I mean about like how bright and vibrant and colorful the yarns are. So I was so, so excited to see this advent calendar and to buy it. I did buy it at a discount because the, like at the, Scottish Yarn Festival, they were a little bit cheaper, but I think maybe you can buy them online. Although I don't know if I'm putting this ep episode out so late that they're all gone. But 100% check out Ammo Yarns. I'm gonna link it below um, because I'm so, so excited about the yarn. So this is yarn. I was really tempted to open it, to secretly open it and then just never talk about it. But I'm gonna be so good and it's gonna be like, I'm gonna exercise self-restraint. Um, and yeah, this is so cute. That is then all the yarn that I bought. I've talked a little bit about my soft accents uh, accessory, my, my project bag. Um, one other kind of accessory, if you wanna call it that, that I got. So you might have already kind of like clocked it, but this, and it all came together like this actually. This is my Chowgu um, mini 
lace, um, the mini like sock set of needles, right? So it has, oh, come on girl. Yeah. So this is the mini lace set, I think is what it's called. Um, it's this set of like the tiniest needles, the tiniest knitting needles you've ever seen. They're so the sizes range from a triple zero, which is a 1.5 millimeter needle, that's the smallest, to a 2.5 millimeter needle. Um, and then of course the set comes with like all your little accessories. It's got this little like rubber thingy that you use to, oh gosh, that you use to tighten the needles like onto the cable um, and of course the set comes with cables it comes with a few little like stitch markers like end stoppers for the cables as well and this i got from the sealy mcwheely stall sally mcwheely sealy mcwheely stall at the scottish yarn festival i saw it and i thought you know what like I've been meaning to get new sock needles uh, because the ones I have from Knit Pro, I don't enjoy knitting with them fully. Um, so I thought I would upgrade. And that is the 2.5 from there is what I have on my muscle bar hat. These are 2.5 millimeter needles. And I mentioned a few episodes ago that I had one kind of gripe about the uh, child goo needles like the, the bigger set that I have um, that gripe is was that the needle kept like unscrewing itself as I was knitting I don't know if it's the way that I was knitting or but I couldn't tighten it with my fingers enough that like it wouldn't un undo itself eventually um I thought back then one solution would be to get one of these they cost like three pounds like separately um to tie it up and I ended up not like I ended up just not buying one and kind of just dealing with it kind of just getting used to it um because like the post between the joint like is long enough that by the time that you've noticed it's unscrewed you're not really I'm not really worried about it actually falling off but it's just, it was just annoying, like, you know, kind of like yarn getting caught on the join kind of situation. Not ideal. Um, I just put off buying one of these because it's a three pound purchase, like online. I think I saw it on like Tribe Yarns. Um, such a small purchase that I was like, I feel like I can't justify just buying this. Um, but then I saw this mini set. These are four inch needles, by the way, that the, the um, the larger set that I have is our five inch needles and they're both fine, different purposes. I think I wouldn't enjoy the larger set as much if it was four, milli four, oh, four millimeters, um, but I'm enjoying the smaller needles in the four, in four inch set. So, but I saw the mini lace set and I saw that it came with, among the accessories, one of these. So I'm not saying like I bought the mini lace set because I had one of these, but I was like very much like, I'm so glad about this. Um, and yeah, once you use this to tighten up, have it on one end and like really tighten that down like that, or you can hold it kind of in the other hand to grip the smaller end of the cable and like really tighten that on. Once you do that, I haven't had any issues. I haven't had any issues with this kind of like, with the needles undoing themselves. So that was my one gripe. I am now like back, I'm like, this is a brilliant set. I really love using it. I haven't had any issues with it. Apparently the customer service is all right as well if you need something replaced. Um, but I haven't needed anything replaced so far. Everything's been in tip top condition as you would expect or, and as you would hope from such a premium brand. And I think that is all of my yarn and that is all the accessories that I bought. One other thing that I did was go to the designer pop-up uh, run by Rebecca of the Caribbean Knitting Podcast, which was so awesome. It was so cool to meet Rebecca. 
Um, I've watched her podcast for a long time. Uh, like, I think the whole time I've been knitting, I immediately was like, podcasters in Scotland. <laughs> um, and Rebecca came up. She's based in Edinburgh. And yeah, she's really cool. If you, if somehow you're here and you haven't seen Rebecca's podcast, 100% check it out. She makes the most beautiful stuff. And I'm still working through the back. I'm kind of like simultaneously working through, like from the end, sorry, working from like her first videos onwards and also watching the newer videos that are released. So I'm going to like meet in the middle somewhere. So she is a knitter and then uh, come designer. Um, I think she started designing, I think it's one year ago. I think I remember I just saw like an anniversary post of like the first pattern released I haven't made anything uh by her yet but I've seen I've been seeing some really really beautiful things so once I finish my Ingrid sweater and then my Whitmore cardigan one of my next big projects might be a Korea Bea project um but yeah I met her at a at her designer pop-up that was at the Scottish Yarn Festival and yeah she's really really cool it was really nice to meet her and she also had some little um some little sti uh, yeah stitch markers that she's been making um I saw them on like I saw them on one of Rebecca's stories before I went there and I was like you know I had to get there and I was like I've been seeing these I saw this adorable adorable little jumper one is that not so cute and I love this color y'all like if there's anything you know about me now at this point it's that I'm obsessed with the teals. I love the sage green. I love that, like, that end of the bluey, vibrant color spectrum. So I had to pick up one of these stitch markers. These were um, just free, but Rebecca, you could sell these. <laughs> like, these are so cute, so adorable. Um, she had, like, a bunch of different um, kinds. But it was also really, really cool to see like with the designer pop-up, I'm not sure if other people did it as well, um, probably. Basically all the samples of her designs that you could see in person, in, in like in the flesh. Um, it's really, really cool to see that in person and see exactly how the yarn and the pattern that, you know, I keep, for at least for me, I keep seeing like online or I keep seeing on YouTube or I keep seeing on Instagram, like this pattern or this, um, this design and this yarn. And like, there was something so, not surreal, but like there was something really cool about seeing it in person and being able to touch it and being able to go, like to see exactly how the designer wants something or like imagined something looking or exactly how the designer has configured things to, to turn out. It was really cool to see that in person. And yeah, I, I loved it. I think on the second day, I also got to see um, a Celie McBeely spinning demonstration and taking a footage of that. <laughs> I was, in, in, I kind of saw it like almost in passing and I was like, oh, that looks really cool. Um, and I also saw somebody weaving, <laughs> which was also really cool. Um, I had to kind of like, I had to get out of that area ASAP because I was like, if I stay here longer, I'm gonna buy a spinning wheel. And those are not in my budget. Um, <laughs> or I'm gonna buy a loom, God. I don't need a, I don't need a loom. I've knit like six things. I don't need a spinning wheel. <laughs> but I thought about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was my, oh my God, I have not been drinking my coffee. That was my Scottish Yarn Festival experience. I think that's everything I have to say about that. I also realized I totally forgot to mention um, what I'm wearing. I don't know, it's not, it doesn't feel like it's a super important part of this podcast episode, but <clears throat> I did not knit this jumper. This is not a handmade jumper. This is just from Topshop. Um, it's this cute little jumper. I love the colors. I love the greens. Um, this is actually on backwards because cheeky be staying on the back, but super cute. I bought this years ago and I realized I've kind of been, uh, not neglecting my, my previous clothes, but like not really wearing my other clothes as much because I am so keen to wear my hand knit stuff. 
um, and make hand knit stuff. But we're coming into autumn weather <laughs> and it's 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 sweater weather. It's time to be wearing to break out the jumpers. Um, so yes, that's what I'm wearing. <laughs> okay, so oh, focus, girl. Hello. Yeah. Um, as a little part two, I went to get another cup. I finished my coffee. This. So we'll do another little, like another what's in my cup section. This I'm very excited to tell you about is. Um, Thompson's Irish breakfast tea. Um, this is tea that I got in Belfast. Um, I was recently in Belfast with Connor, of course. Um, this has like nothing to do about knitting or yarn. I think I've finished the knitting content. So I guess if you're not interested anymore in, if you're not interested in non-knitting things, you can watch another video or click off. That's totally fine. Um, but for those who are interested, my Irish breakfast tea, uh, Connor and I took a trip to Belfast for our anniversary, um, which was so, so lovely. It was such a cool trip. I didn't go to any yarn, uh, yarn shops or stores because A, I had just been to the Scottish Yarn Festival <laughs> and B, we were only there for a weekend. So it was, oh, it was so awesome and lovely. Lots of like <laughs> Irish pubs and like, Lots of checking out the city centre and walking around in Belfast. Um, lots of delicious food. Um, probably like we always go away on holiday and we have some of the most delicious food we've ever, we've ever had. And we're like, this is amazing. This is incredible. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. Go to Belfast. Uh, flights to there are like pretty cheap from Scotland. So if you're <laughs> if you're in Scotland, check out Belfast. Um, really great like long weekend away I could spend long longer there and do more we it was more of a kind of like urban rest and relaxation kind of holiday for us this time but we would definitely do more like walking going checking out the Giants Causeway that like more outdoors stuff and um, but because we only had a weekend because I knew that I was about to go into writing my dissertation and working and I very much knew that I wanted it to be rest and relaxation and it was perfect. It was awesome. So Connor booked us uh, one for the first night we stayed in this really nice hotel for the actual day of our anniversary, um, which is really beautiful. Like a five star hotel, the Fitzwilliam, that's what it was called. Um, it was really awesome. That was a surprise. The whole holiday was actually kind of a surprise. Like we had talked about maybe going away for the weekend of our anniversary. Um, Kind of like talked about it we talked about maybe going camping we talked about like going to england we talked about like a few things um but we kind of we talked about it in the sense that like we both and probably a lot of people like we both kind of like talk about doing things a lot and when it's like there's a bit of inertia about actually booking it so it literally got to like the 11th, our, our anniversary was on the 14th. It got to the 11th, we were both working. Connor was in, in um, Wales visiting his brother. So we were actually kind of like talking on the phone about this, like, and Connor called me and he was like, yeah, so I booked those tickets. And I was like, well, what tickets? He was like, yeah, tickets for Belfast. We're going to Belfast. Um, I was like, oh, when? Like, he was like, yeah, we're going to Belfast on the 14th. I was like, this is the 11th. You're. <laughs> <laughs> this is the 11th and you're also in Cardiff and I'm also working like two night shifts <laughs> like it was we had been talking about it but it was I did not actually think it was going to happen Connor booked the tickets packed our bags when we could and went to Belfast so it was very 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 last minute um but yeah it was really awesome like I would go back I, I really loved it I had such a lovely time um, that is another thing that I've been up to, another place I have been, uh, and another reason I have not been recording an episode, being in Belfast. So, yeah, it's been very busy, but very, like, I'm very excited about all the new things that are happening, not just yarn-wise and knitting-wise, but also kind of um, at uni with writing my dissertation, or like, you know, starting to kind of dial in my research question, um, and like having meetings with supervisors, things happening with work where I'm doing a bit more training and stuff like that. 
Um, I feel very much like I am in a period or in a space of growth and like uh, inquisition. Inquisition, is that the right? Yeah, like this um, curiosity. So yeah, really good. I think that finally brings me to the end of the episode. Um, I don't think I have much more to say. If I do, I sh oh God, I should be recording another video soon because I have literally, like last night, been doing even more exciting kind of knit things that I don't wanna talk about in this video because it's gonna make this video so, so long um, and I have a lot of ideas. But that's the end of this episode. If you're, if you're here, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I mean, like the um, shout out that I got from Needles at the Ready, the Needles at the Ready podcast was just so awesome. And it brought like a huge influx, or for me at least, huge influx of um, subscribers or like people have come along from watching their videos and they're like, this is how I found your video. So yeah, that, that's, that's really awesome. And so like, hello to all you new followers, a lot of new followers. I think like, I think I'm somewhere upwards of 800 subscribers now, which is really, really awesome. Like lots of new people, hello. <laughs> I hope you liked the video. If you did, subscribe, like, do the things. Um, if you didn't, still like and subscribe and do the things. But you can also leave me a comment with like feedback if you would like. Yeah, I have lots of ideas. I have lots of creative energy for like a lot of different aspects of my life right now. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. I've been Nicole, um, and this has been the fifth episode of this Thread of Gold Knitting Podcast.